Okay, so in 2014, the sixth question, a learning management system, LMS, is an application of ICT in education sector. Write down two other applications of ICT in education sector, right? So other than the learning management system, right? So let's go with the uh, marking scheme. Right, uh, in, the, in the English marking scheme, it wasn't there. So like, um, I'm going with the, uh, this particular, the single one. So it, it gives you the uh, idea. So the applications that can be taken as CAL, CAL means computer aided learning, CAE, -C -A -E. Uh, it is called computer aided education and CBT, computer based training. Right, or you can say computer based teaching. Right, so as well as you can say WBT, uh, web based training or web based teaching, right, e learning, uh, mobile learning, m learning as well. Right, and uh, you can take EMIS, Educational Management Information Systems, right? And conducting online exams, online distance education systems, web TVs, e-libraries, right? So those kind of things can be taken as the correct answer. So they were only asking for two things, right? So you can give two things and, uh, but they are suggesting here is, if you just write the uh, CAL, CAE, CBT, you are not going to have one mark. You have to have the, uh, uh, the extraction of it, right? So like not the CAL, but computer uh, assistance learning or computer aided learning. And uh, CAE, computer assistance education or computer aided education, right? So uh, you should write the entire phrase, right? What is CAL? If you just say CAL or CAE or CBT or WBT in, in short form, you are not going to uh, get full marks, right? So two marks for any of the answers. In the second question, uh, what they're asking us uh, in LMS, can be used to conduct the activities given in the following table more efficiently and conveniently. Therefore, the three categories, student, teachers, and school administrators are benefited. And it says, identify which category is mostly benefited by the LMS for each of the above activities and write the respective category against the activity number, right? So let's go with the marking scheme as they uh, clarified it uh, uh, clearly. Let me see whether they got it in the, this particular marking scheme. No, they don't. Okay, so this is the way they have done that. So the, uh, uh, the first particular one, so they were, introducing th three particular uh, categories, student, teachers, and school administration, right? So student registration, they have taken as school administration. Right, I'll uh, write it over here. So this is, I'll take S and A to indicate school administration. So this is for school administration, marking student attendance registry. So it's better go with teachers, issuing certificates, good to go with student, conducting preliminary test to assess student skills, goes with teacher. Hold on the second paper.
Right, so conducting preliminary tests to assess student skills, that is for teacher. Conducting school-based assessment. Um, yeah, that can also can be taken as the benefit of the teachers, as well as the students as well. Let's see, using multimedia and rich lesson for self-studying, that is definitely for the student. Using multimedia and rich lessons to classroom teaching for teachers. Ability to access preferred lesson at preferred time. That is for student in much more manner, right? So let's see uh, how the marking scheme has went. Yeah, so like uh, the first one, they say the uh, school administration. Second one, they say teachers. Third one, they say school administration. Uh, that is a little bit different from us. Issuing certificates. Yeah, since it is an issuing one, yeah, yeah. It's better it goes with this school administration, the third one. And fourth and fifth, we took it as teachers. So let's see. Yes, fourth and fifth is for teachers, then student, teacher, and student. So yes, student, teacher, and student, yes. So like we categorize. <coughs> These are going to be the answers. So the marking, uh, the mark allocation, what they have done is, yeah, they have given you four marks, 0.5 for each correct answer. So four marks all together. Right, so see how much you got out of eight. Right, so moving to the third part. So the third part says the software that are meant to adversely affect computer system is known as malicious software or malware. Computer virus is one type of malware, right? Two other types of malware. So you can write many, right? You can uh, write Trojans, uh, worms, right? Bots, right? There are different kinds of things, right? Here comes a list of it. Worms, Trojan hosts, spyware, adware, hijackers, dialers, spams, even you can say bots. Right, so any two will give you two marks. And uh, the part B is asking, write down two kinds of damages caused by a computer virus, right? It can, it can cause harm or like cause damages to the hardware, right? So it can corrupt data, right? Or you can lose the data and uh, uh, disabling the system and the application software, reduction of efficiency, right? Uh, disturbing the file system, like, like by doing making shortcuts or hiding or copying files to somewhere else, likewise. So any two points will give you one mark as a total. So that means 0.5 for each part. So they are asking for two points, 0.5 for each, total one mark to the B part of the third part in the question. And in C, they're asking write down two methods to protect a standalone computer from virus infection. What do you mean by standalone computer? That means it is not connected to any particular uh, network. Right, staying, staying alone, right, standing alone. Okay, so what kind of a things that you can take? Uh, clearly, you can have a virus guard, right? And you can have this good practice of scanning any external device before it is been opened, right? And uh, it's better you keep backups on important uh, documents or files. Uh, installing and updating antivirus software and uh, providing use accounts for general purposes, 
uh, using the license software so that uh, use, by using license softwares, you won't be able to uh, uh, gather, gather any uh, malware through a software setup. Updating operating system software, which is a much needed one. Careful use of external storage devices. Yeah. So these ideas should be there. Again, you're going to have one mark for that, half mark for each point. So that's how the uh, how it ends the sixth question. So see how much you got out of 10. I'm moving to the seventh question then. So the seventh says, consider the expression about the system development life cycle given in column X and column Y below. Fetch expression in column X has the correspondence to one of the expression in column Y. Select each expression in the column X and write down its corresponding expression in column Y, right? So they have given you an example. So for one, they have taken as D. So one, it is D. So like a characteristics of a system is made up of different components. An example for a system. So final stage of testing and debugging of a system. No, nope. having discussion with the client. No, nope. next phase can be considered only if the current phase is successful. No, nope. D has already taken. E, they has a flow chart. Uh, F, it says transaction of school canteen. So yeah, we can go with the F, I guess. Let's keep it and uh, move forward. A main fact gathering techniques. Uh, let me see. Yes, having discussion with the client. So that's a clear cut answer. For second, we are pending. For the third, it is going to be B. A tool used, used in detail designing. Uh, yeah, in detail designing, yeah, we use flowchart. Uh, yeah. We can go with that because it is the only tool that they are talking about in here. But other than the flowchart, there are many different tools that we can use. User acceptance testing, final stage of testing and debugging of a system. So fifth one goes with A. Sixth, an advantage of pace implementation. Uh-huh. Yeah, next phase can be considered only if the current pace is successful. So we can go with the C. So for the second one, we are left with F. But uh, there are many uh, uh, like ways that we can express a particular system. Transactions of school, canteen, it's not a very good way of expressing a, a system, but anyhow, it, it has a particular thing. So this is going to be the way you are going to map this thing. So 1D, they have given it, 2F, 3B, 4E, SA, 6C. So the marking goes, Yeah, so one mark per each correct combination. So which gives you five marks. 2F, 3B, 4E, 5A, 6C. Right, and the second one, it says using the World Wide Web to find information is common practice today. Assume that you have a computer with required software at home. Name one hardware device needed to connect the computer to the internet. So you can easily say router, right? Which we always know. So other than the router, you can go with these things as well. The modem, dongle, right? Uh, ADSL router, wireless router, or just a router. 
a network interface card dnic that means uh, a particular network port right so any of these things will give you marks and uh, as the very last one assume that you want to find information about the history of sri lanka and that you do not know the web address or the url of a website that has this information right the steps you would follow to find this information on the world wide web so it's easy we know we have to do a search so we need to open a web browser we need to load a searching engine first right or a search engine first then you are going to type history of sri lanka or some any some some place related to the uh, history of sri lanka and then you will hit the search box button and the result will be shown in the same page with different kinds of links right so like if all four steps are, are going in a proper manner you can take four marks right uh, Yeah, and they said step two is compulsory to give marks for the other steps below. Right, so if, if the second one, or like in case if you are not saying that you are using a search engine, rest of the steps are not going to have any marks. Right, so for the previous part, the second A part, uh, for the defining of the device, one mark. In part B, you are going to have four marks. Okay, so that concludes the 214. So you better mark the marks of the second paper. Out of 60, so the first question is getting 20 marks. Other four questions are getting 10. So see how much you got out of 60. If you have done any extra questions, please leave them out, right? So consider only four questions with the first uh, particular question, and then you can calculate the marks. Yeah, and people, let me let me know as well. Very good on intra, right? So it's good. Miha, okay, well done. You have passed the expected level. Yes, how about others? Dulagi, that's a good mark. Very good. Keep it up. Bisandi, that's great. That's great. Kimi Devi, that's a very good mark for the second paper. Let me know the uh, complete marks. Oh, yes. Thanks, Dad. Bye. Anitra, very good. And uh, uh, find the other four marks so you will be very confident, right? This is a good mark to her. Samadhi, okay. You have to work a little bit more to her, but uh, it's, it's good but it's better you advance, right? See uh, uh, what you have missed, right? Then uh, you can, okay. Be, uh, yeah, Binadi, that's a very good mark. That's brilliant. Okay, keep it up, keep it up. Kimidiri, very well done.
Okay. Right. Others, you can send me the marks. So meanwhile, I'm going to show you the marking of the 2015. Please mark it and send me the incorrect questions. People just mark it, uh, I'll be right back. All right, Minol, I receive yours. Let me uh, mark it. Himidiri, I received yours. Binadi, I received yours as well. Netra, I received yours. Dulagi, I received yours as well. 13 and 31 are very common with you all. Let's see what's there. Januli, I received yours.
Minha I receive yours. And uh, Sunday, sun, yeah, yes, it's Sunday. Okay, 13 and 19. Be Sunday, I receive yours. Okay, did I receive everyone? Yeah, I got only nine. There are. Okay, Saran. Samadhi, I receive yours. Okay. Saran, I receive yours. Olanga and Vishmi, you two are there to send me the uh, things. Mesand, uh, I think. Uh, And it's under 13 to 20. Okay. All right. Olanga and uh, wish me. If you two send me the marks, send me the interact questions, we can start the uh, discussion.
Yes, Palanga and Vishmi. Are you still marking people? Okay, so Olang and Vishmi, please have the uh, screenshot of the marking. I'm moving to the uh, discussion. You two may send me the uh, incorrect question numbers, right? So meanwhile, let me uh, arrange this. Okay, so let's start the uh, discussion. So the first question to be asked is the second one. Which of the following is not a potential benefit of a computer network which is connected to the internet? Which is connected to the internet, right? So it says backing up files to a file server in another network connecting to the internet which is a benefit right so we can take it as a benefit and reduce risk of viruses and malware uh-huh it's some um, no like uh, we can't have reduced risk of viruses and malware since we are like connecting with the internet there is an increase of risk of viruses and malware so Second one is, seems to be the answer. Uh, sharing resources in the network, it's a benefit. Use of the web, it's a benefit again. Right, so the second one can be taken as the answer. All right, then the eighth one. People, my uh, computer's battery is not in a very good health, so sometimes it will suddenly get off, right? So, if so, just stay in the meeting, I'll be right back, right? I just need to see, like, uh, what is the point that is going to uh, give me the, this headache, right? Okay, so the eighth one, which of the following represents the ascending order of the four numbers, right? So now this kind of uh, 
questions are common now, right? So you have to get ready with these things. So they are asking the ascending order. That means smallest one should come first, the biggest one should be at the end, right? So they have 170 and this particular binary value 2F16, 46,687, right? So now the first thing that we can do is like if you, like uh, this is this is going to be uh, this is one of the tricks that we can use. If you take the first and the third, the last answer is forty six thousand six hundred eighty seven, and uh, this one is also and two F sixteen two F sixteen are going to be the last one. So, like it seems to be, uh, uh, it can like forty six thousand one can be a bigger answer, but since we don't know what the other things are being represented, we may uh, go with the, uh, the explanation of all four, right? But if we compare the 46,687 with 2F16, if 46,687 is the biggest, definitely the second and the fourth answers are going to be disqualified because 46,000, 687 is like before the 2F16 in second and fourth answer, right? So anyway, I'm going to do all the things. So like 46,687, we know the uh, how it's been. So I'll take 2F. So how the two F are going to be converted into the decimal. This is a hexadecimal one. So this is going to be one and this is going to be 16. So 16 into two plus one into 15. Why it is 15? F indicates a 15. So 32 plus 15, which is going to give you 37. I'm sorry, 47. Right, so definitely the, the number 2F is less than 46,687. So due to that, second and the fourth answers are disqualified. Now the answers are going to be either from one or the uh, third. So now since we know about the 2F, let's quickly see what it's going to be the uh, binary value. Because here we got 2F, here we got binary value, right? So if the binary value is larger than the 2F, it's going to be the third one. Otherwise, we can go for the first one. So the binary value is one triple zeros and four ones. So this is one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and this is hundred and twenty-eight. And definitely. This is going to be something bigger than 128. Right. So what are the things that we are going to consider this 128 and these values that which gives you 15. So 128 plus 15 means 143. So if you compare to the binary value, it is bigger than the 2F. So definitely the third one is going to be the answer. Right? And we can prove it. 
by doing the 117 octal. So this has one, this has eight, and this has 64. So 64 into one plus eight into seven plus one into zero, which gives you 64 plus 56 plus a zero, which gives you 120. Right, so the 47 is the smallest, then 120, then 143. Finally, the 46,687, right? So the third one is going to be the answer. Okay, is that clear everyone? All right, great. Going for the ninth, which of the files or files given in table one could be stored in USB storage device having a total capacity of 4 GB so that least amount of unused space is left on the device. Okay. So the uh, 4 GB is the disk size or the pen drive size. And we are having 300, 740, and 3 GB, right? So definitely having these two will only give you 1,040 MBs, right? Which is little bit bigger than 1 GB. So definitely with these two, we can't, we can't store all three things inside the uh, pen drive because pen drive capacity is 4 GB. So since these two are larger than 1 GB, we can't store this thing with these two, right? So since, see, since they are asking to have the least amount of unused space, we must store the C.MP4 which has 3 GB. And with 3 GB, if we want to use the disk in a maximum way, like using the disk in a maximum way means having the minimum or the least amount of unused space. So you can go with this 740 MB. So it's B and C that you are going to store, right? And why? 1040 megabytes are bigger than 1 GB. 1 GB means 1024 megabytes. So that is why 1040 megabytes are bigger than 1 GB. All right. Moving to the 11. The following labeled activities from A to H are included in the system development life cycle. Yeah, now this uh, feasibility study should be here. Yes, and uh, it is not in our syllabus, but all the other steps are there in our syllabus, right? So we will we'll try to uh, figure it out. I think without the uh, uh, place of the feasibility study, we will be able to take the answer. Right, we'll see. Right, so first thing, so there are system development, feasibility study, system implementation, system maintenance, problem definition, system analysis, system design, and testing is there. So first thing is going to be the problem definition. Right, then like according to our syllabus, this is going to be the second one, system analysis. Right, so the answer should start from an E. See, now since we know this answer must start with an E, third one is going to be your answer because it is the only answer which is starting with an E. Right, first one is starting with A, system development. Second one is starting with C, system implementation. Fourth one is starting with G, system designing. 
which is not going to be the starting point. So first one, system analysis is the second one. Then we can design the uh, system, which is going to be the third one. Then we can develop the system, which is going to be the fourth one. Then we can test the system, which is going to be the fifth one. Then we can, after we test it, we can install or implement to the particular client, which is going to be the sixth one. And then we are going to maintain it, which is going to be the seventh one. All right? Now, generally the feasibility study comes after the problem definition before the system analysis. All right? So that doesn't matter for the answer. Right, so 11, it's the third one, is the answer. 13, yeah, now this is something, uh, uh, make a, this is not out of syllabus, but it is something very unwanted, like we are not uh, remembering the uh, file types in our mind, which are going to have the, uh, uh, the word document or like the word processing software as extensions, right? So all four things are text type extensions or the uh, word processing software extensions. ODT stands for open document text where you are going to have the extension with the open office kind of software. DOCX and DOC we know it is with the word processing software like the MS Word, right? So this is uh, related with the open office. And these two related with the MS Word. And this, this is called the rich type format that can be uh, done by many different uh, word processing software. Right. There is no one specific type of uh, application software which create RTFs. So you can go with the answer, say in all A, B, C, and D. Right? But uh, it's not fair to ask something like this. Like we generally, there are many different uh, uh, extensions which can be a, a word processing software as extension, right? Even like the, you can take PDF, you can take HTML types, you can take TXT types, right? And uh, there are many other questions that uh, you people can get other than this, right? So, but I'm saying is just don't worry about these extensions. They are not going to ask it again. But for the 13th, fourth one is going to be the answer. Okay, then the 19th. Yeah, the formula equals to, this is exponential exponentiation. Five plus 16 is entered to a cell in a spreadsheet. What value will be displayed in the cell? So two expon exponentiation five means what? what? Two to the power five. That means 32, right? So this gives you 32 plus 16, which is 48. Fourth one is the answer, right? You may get this wrong because you don't have any idea about the exponentiation symbol. This symbol is for the exponentiation. Okay, so the 20th, it is talking about the definition list here. That means you are going to have the definition title like this. This is from DT. And if you have got a definition description, it's going to be like this. This is due to DD. Both have open tag and the closing tags. 
So definition list, they have taken DT coffee, DD hot drink. So coffee should be like this. And hot drink should be indented. And again, milk should be like this. Cold drink should be indented. So first one, no indentation, an incorrect one. Second one is the correct answer. Third one, you are getting bullets. You are not getting any bullets for the uh, uh, definition list. And there is no indentation. Fourth one could be a correct one if they don't have the uh, bullets. So because of the bullets, fourth one is wrong as well. So for 20th, it's the second one. All right. Are you clear until this point? Is there any other questions that you haven't mentioned until this point for you to discuss? Yes, people, are you clear with this? Okay. Right, going for the 21st question. Consider the following HTML statement for creating a table. So it says table border one, table border equals one means you can see the border, right? And it is taking TR. So TR indicates a table row. And you can see there are 40 R couples. That means the table is going to be, table is going to have four rows, right? So, and with only that detail, we can't leave the second and the fourth because if the spanning happens, we may not visible a particular row as specifically, right? Span color the book. Samaharada rows done are doing the pull one due to a span as well as the columns. So let's see. First one says TH name and TH telephone number. So there is a problem in the output when we are using the TH. It's getting bold faces and it will be center aligned. So none of the uh, answers are being center aligned. Have they given all for the 21st? No, they haven't, right? Okay. But it should be on that manner. It should be bold faced and should be center aligned. However, so they are bold faced in. Uh, every uh, particular one. And the first column should contains the name and the telephone number, All right? So then due to that, here you got Gunaratna and Somasundaram, which is wrong. Here you get the same thing again. So it is wrong because it should be a two column one, All right? And uh, next TD, the table data, says Gunaratna and a particular phone number. So Gunaratna is there and a particular phone number is there. And here with the Gunaratna's TD, they haven't said anything about the call spanning. Right? I'm sorry, row spanning. So that means Gunaratna should be showed a one particular cell and this telephone number also should be comes as a one particular cell. So third answer got that, but the first answer has been spanned. So the row span has effect over here. So, but in this TD, there is no any row span. So due to that, 
the first one is wrong. So the second TD has rho span equals to, that means this cell plus the next cell are being spanned. Can emerge Karavagi. Right? So a third and fourth rows were first cells there. It is being spanned. But this second column cells, they are going to be staying alone. So this will be a lone one. The last TD's first TR is taken, first TD space is taken from here, from the spanning process. And this is going to be the second TD. So the third one is going to be the answer. Okay, is that clear, everyone? Okay. Right, 22nd. Which of the following HTML tag combination allows to add a row in a table? That is a very simple one, people. The first one, TR, open and TR close. They are talking about add a row, right? So it is always the TR table row. There is nothing called CR. TH stands for table header. TD stands for table data. 23rd, which of the following HTML tag combination is used to display numbered list? That is a simple one as well, people. It is an ordered list. So ordered list is the one which gives you to gives you the ability to show the numbers per list item. If you take unordered list, you will be seeing the bullets. Then the list items will be there. Twenty fourth. Consider the following assignment statement in a program segment, which are executed in the given order. Day equals 14, today equals 18, day equals today. Contents of the day and today after execution of the above three statements are respectively. Now, this is a very good question, which where you should have the idea about the memory and the variables to figure out the answer. So when day equal 14 means in the RAM, it is creating a place which is labeled as day and put 14 inside it when this executes. When this is being executes, they create a place and name it as today and they store 18 inside it. When this statement executes, the value of today will be assigned to the value of day. That means value of today is 18. That 18 will be assigned to the 14. That means day is also going to have 18 as well. Now today is having 18. Day is also having 18. So the final values or the contents are going to be 18, 18. Simple as that. People, is that clear? Yeah, Saran, is it a is it a different answer? Twenty fourth. No, no, it's a fourth one. Okay, okay, Saran, no worries. All right, twenty eight. Ah, okay, Sarah. So you may have think it on the other way around. 
So 28th, okay. Ah, multimedia questions. Which tool is the most appropriate to draw the rabbit in the above figure one? Now rabbit is having uh, like curve lines and dots and all these things, right? So they have uh, mentioned four different, five different tools, right? So P is used for cropping. T is used to uh, draw a shape. Q is the paint bucket. You, you, you use it to uh, apply a color to a particular component. S is the pencil. This is going to be the answer. R is the magic wand or the fussy tool. This is also called magic wand. Right, so the answer is going to be the S. Because it is the one which where we can use and uh, when, which we can use to do the line drawing, right? So fourth one is going to be the answer. In 31, yeah, an image having the size of one inch and one inch with 72 PPI. 72 PPI means what? 72 pixels per inch, right? Would consist of, they're asking how many pixels are there. So like this is 72 PPI means the resolution 72 PPI means there are 72 pixels uh, as the horizontal manner, and there are 72 pixels in the vertical manner, right? So 72 into 72 is going to give you something 5,184, right? Yeah, so 31, the fourth one should be the answer. Yeah, so 72 into 72. Right, so this 72 PPI means in a one inch, one inch square has 72 pixels horizontally as well as 72 pixels vertically. Seran, uh, there are ways that the uh, resolution is indicated, right? So it's 1920 in 2080 means it's a different size of pixels that they are introducing, right? So if you want to take it in PPI, then you have to go with the calculation of 1920-2080 and deal with the one inch, one inch square to take it from the PPI. Here in the resolution is given according to the width and the height. Got it, Saran? They are talking about the entire width and the entire height. Right, okay. 33rd, which of the following are appropriate measures in protecting a computer system from virus infection? Paying greater attention to email attachment received. Yes, much better because if you, if you find a spam email, it's better you do not open it if you don't know who the sender is. So like paying attention to email attachment will uh, give you the uh, protection or like uh, will give you the uh, chance to protect your computer 
from the virus infections. So it is a correct one. Taking care in the use of external storage devices. Yes, definitely we have to. It's better we scan it and use, right? Disabling the use of macro facility in the software. Yeah, you may have no idea about this, uh, maybe, right? Because we are don't talk about any macro facilities, but uh, when we are talking about the malicious software and the prevention, as I remember, we talk about the macro facility. Like it's, it's like macro facility is something like this. Like in, in uh, the softwares like uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and all these things, they have a facility called macro facility where we can record some things or the, uh, uh, the, some particular task that we do. Like as an example, if you think uh, we take a particular uh, heading or particular word, we make it to some particular size, applying it a particular uh, color and making it bold, doing it italic. There are some particular procedures happening one after the other. So we can record this as a macro. Later, we can use the macro to another particular word or a place where it is going to have the same effects and uh, the components or the uh, characteristics as the previous one. So when we enable the macro facility, macro is uh, saving and it's getting saved as an exe file, as an executable file where we can find the most of the viruses are also in the same executable type. So enabling the macro means it is enabling for the virus to run as a macro as well. So for that reason, we can take this as a correct answer because disabling those things won't allow the uh, particular macros to be run automatically or to be run when it needs, right? So for that reason, we can take all A, B, C, A, B, and C, and I can give you the marks since you are not talking about the macro facilities in detail, right? So you can take the marks for the 33rd. Right, then the 35th. Which of the following pseudocode segment is equal to the logic of given flow chart segment? Okay, so it is having two particular conditions. And uh, yeah, if you think about the flow of this segment, it does not show you any iterative nature. Right, if we can find the iterative nature, we can find these uh, arrows are going again or like going round and round to indicate an iterative one. So here in this segment, the flow is not going to be happen again and again. So it is purely a selection. Both the conditions should be a selection. And again, if you look into the answers, you, you, you won't find any uh, uh, iterative structure or a repetitive structures in the answer as well. So now let's argue. So the first condition, A larger than 25. So if A larger than 25 should be there. So in all the answers, that part is correct. And here, under the if section, what we can see is the things to be done when the condition is true, right? So according to the flow chart, it says, if this condition is true, they say do P. That means under the if condition of the flow chart, do p should be there. So each and every place has do p. 
which is correct. So that is the true part. And we have to think about the false path as well. So on the false path of the first condition, Ah, yes, Saran, thank you for taking that, taking that for the consideration, yeah. The second one, the second one, this condition is wrong. So second is disqualified already. So once this condition is correct, I'm sorry, once this condition is false in the false part, you are finding another condition. So if you are finding a condition on the false path means you are finding an else if. So inside an else, there should be a if or otherwise you can write it as else if. So each and every answer has else and an if, else and an if, else and an if. And we are not uh, bothering about the second one. So let's cut that out. And this also having else and if. But look at the condition. It says B less than 10. So here the condition is okay. Condition is okay. Here the condition has a problem in the fourth one. It says B larger than 10. Right? So if b larger than if b less than 10 then it says do q so here we got do q now fourth one is also taken out here it says do r so if the b is less than 10 it should be do q so here we got do r so the third one disqualified so the answer going to be the first one People, is that clear? Right, moving to the 36th. Mark for 10 subjects of a student are stored in an array marks. They're talking about the arrays with the index ranging from one to 10. A pseudo code to calculate the average marks with three labels, PQ and R is given below. So they have take total marks equals to P, they say four i equals one to 10. So the value of i is going to change from one to 10 per iteration. So in the first iteration, i's value will be one. And in the second iteration, i's value will be two. In the third iteration, i's value will be three. Likewise, it will go until the 10. And it says begin. They say total marks equal total marks plus marks q. We have to find the answer for the P, for the Q, and for the R. Right? And <clears throat> this says total uh, marks equal total marks plus marks within square brackets Q. And it is end. That means this four is going to end from here. Then it says average marks equal total marks divided by R. Right, so at the beginning, at the very beginning, there is no value for the total marks. That means total marks should be a zero. So because of that, we can take P as a zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. And since it is telling this particular thing, array marks with the index ranging from one to 10. What does this mean? 
This means there is a variable like this, and it has 10 positions. which is indexed like this. Right. And there can be some particular marks. Let's say these type of marks are there. We don't know. Right, so to add these things up, from the first index to the last index, we have to say at the first index value to the total marks. So this first index is going to be added to the total marks in the first iteration. Palavini iteration again. Deveni ke the at karagano deveni ke. The third iteration should be the third one. So your indexes are going to be changed like one, two, three. And it is the very same way that the I is going to change. So due to that, this Q can be written as the I. So in the first iteration, it will say marks, uh, marks one. So first index will be referred, seven will be taken. In the second iteration, it says marks two. So second index is referred and two is taken. In the third iteration, marks three. This is the marks three's value. People hold on a second. Yeah, good that I had a warning. Right, so that means Q is going to change as I. And later, average marks are equals to total marks divided by R. Now, R can be either the 10 or the I because at the end of the uh, iteration, I is going to become 10 anyway, right? So let's match with the starting points. P should be a zero. So third and the fourth answers are gone because P is not going to be the 10 anyway, right? Then it is easy for us to go. So, P should be zero, Q should be I. So this has 10 as the Q, so it is wrong again. So the correct answer is going to be this. Okay, people, is that clear? How the array is working and how the array values were being considered using the indexes. Yes, everyone, is that clear? Yes, Lamai, is that clear? Okay, right, moving to the 38th. Consider the following pseudocode segment, odd total equals zero, count equals zero, current odd equals one, while count less than or equal three. So they are asking what is the output of it, right? So let's hand trace this. So odd total. It says zero. Count. It is a zero as well. And the current odd. 
it says one. So it says while count less than or equals three, count is less than or equals three, less than three, so count is zero. It says odd total equals odd total plus current total. So odd total is zero, zero plus one. So they're asking you to take the current odd, take the odd totals value for the moment, add them together, and make it the value of the odd total again. So zero plus one will give you a one. And it says current odd equals current odd plus two. So current odds value is one. Said, if something like this is said, that means they are asking you to increase the current odds value by two, and then again assign it to the current odd. So one plus two will become three. So the current odd value is three now. And they say count equals count plus one. That means count is also being increased by one. So zero will become a one. Since it is the last line of the while, it will go back to the condition and check whether it is true. It is true it's still, right? Count is less than three. So same happens, a total will be added with current total. A total is one, current total is three, one plus three is four. Current odd will be increased by two. So current odd is three for the moment, three will become five. Count will increase by one. So one will become two. Goes up and change the, uh, check the condition again. Still it's true, count is two, it is less than three. So again, a total thing is going to happen. So a total is four, current total is five, four plus five is nine. So nine will happen. Current odd increased by two, so five will become seven. So count equals count plus one. So two has become the three. Goes up and checks again. Count is not less than three, but equal part is there still. So it is equal to three. So still it is true. So then again, a total is added to the current odd. That means nine plus seven, which is 16. And current odd plus two is happening. So seven will become nine. This is happened. Then count is per count plus one. So three will become four. So now goes up again and check the condition. Now the condition is wrong. So it comes to the end while and print the odd total. So odd total means what? 16, so that is why second one is the answer. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, everyone, is that clear? Okay, we can end the session after doing the 39. Consider the following pseudocode segment. If average mark larger than 50, if, if failed subject is equal to zero, then scholarship equals true, and if and end if. Which of the following is equal to the logic in the above pseudocode? Okay, so this is checking two conditions. If this is true, they are checking whether this is true as well. If both are being true, this will happen. So if both the conditions need to be true, that means it indicates the end operation, right? So if average mark larger than 50 and fail subject equals zero, first one is going to be the answer. It is not the O and uh, yeah, not like this. 
no else or anything as well as no else as well right so the first one is going to be the answer all right people so that's the end of the first paper of 215 so by next week we are discussing the second paper of the 215 as well as get ready with the 216 right always keep a one paper ahead when we are discussing the papers right so do the rest of the 215 the second part as well as 216 so you will be having no worries if we are done with the second part and move to the 216 okay people so thank you very much for today i'm going to end the session from here i'll meet you on next week for the very same time all right thank you very much people have a very nice weekend Thank you, sir. Right, right, the word. Thank you very much.